I've looked at the idea of finding a combined resistor that would give the same current in the circuit as a number of resistors connected in series. I'm now going to look at a simple example in which we have two resistors that are not in series. The two resistors are not in series. What do they look like? Okay, start with my cell. With the longer side is the positive pole. I have, let's say, a wire. Connected to a resistor. So that's just a single resistor. If it is if there is another resistor in series, then it would be somewhere here. Alright, it'll be joined one after another. But if it is not in series, what could happen, for example, is that it, the wire could branch off. You could just take a piece of connect a piece of wire there. It could branch off into another resistor, and then the wire from that resistor would join back to the circuit at some later point. Now, if you look at this. The two resistors are definitely not one after another along the same wire. Okay, in particular, we have this branching here, which is an important feature of, of, of this, which is uh, in, an important feature here, something that you don't see when the resistances are, are in series, when they're actually one after another. In series, there's no the, the, the current don't split into two parts. So if these are not in series, how do I describe this arrangement? This arrangement is said to be in parallel. Okay, so here we have two resistors in parallel. What I like to do, what I like to do is similar to to what I tried to do in the past two videos, I want to find a combined resistor. I want to find a single the resistance of a single resistor that would give the same current as these two resistors together. Now, but we have to be a little bit careful here by what we mean by the same current because as you have seen, uh, the current, the current from the battery, would split up. It must split up when it comes to this branching point. So, most likely, most likely, the current in each branch would have a smaller value than the starting current, simply because it has split up. So, when we say the same current here. In this equivalent, this combined uh, for this combined resistor, when we say the same current here, which current are we referred to? Okay. Now the answer to that is very uh, specific. We must refer to the current before it splits up, before it splits up into two parallel currents. So that means it is the I, the part that comes out of the battery. Okay. The the purpose of this. Uh, combined resistor is that it must it must uh, give the same current when it replaces this whole arrangement of of uh, resistors, including all these branching points. Okay, so that is just connected directly to to the wire with a simple single wire, just like this part of the circuit. So that means that you could imagine that we are we are hoping to replace this whole lot 
okay, by that single combined resistor. I'll just draw a dashed box here just to remind ourselves. So that's the part whose equivalent resistance we want to calculate. Okay. So let's say these separate resistances are R1 and R2 and the combined resistor resistance is RC. And it's RC that I want to find in terms of R1 and R2. So let's say the power, uh, the, the battery, the cell EMF is E. The same E and I want the same current I here and here. As before, as with the previous case of resistors in series, the way to approach this, the way to try and find the answer is to start by writing down all the related equations, all the equations that can relate these quantities. So for this, it will be the same Ohm's law relating voltage, current and resistor, resistance. E is equal to I times R C. Now in this case, previously we had made use of um, the work done by the EMF when we had resistances in series. Now in this case, um, in this case it's still true that the work done um, by bringing a coulomb of charge round circuit once is the same as the separate work done in the two resistors except that when one coulomb of charge goes round the circuit it splits up into separate coulombs and we don't really know what the separate um, amounts of coulombs are so that's not uh, that's not very helpful but what I we could do instead is if, if I think about the current, this current I here and the current I here, if I think about this current splitting up into, into two separate currents, I can, I can have a relation between the separate currents I1 and I2 and the original current I. Now if you think about it this way, let's say the I is a certain number of coulombs, maybe uh, uh, 2 coulombs per second, for example. If it splits up into one coulomb here and one one coulomb, but every second two coulombs will come come to this branching point. If it splits up, then we might have say uh, one coulomb go there and one coulomb go there, right? Every second, if I have two coulombs coming in, the number of coulombs going into each wire must add up to two coulombs as well. So therefore. The current coming in must be equal to the sum of the currents going out. Okay, because we can't have more coulombs of charge uh, uh, appearing. Since charge actually, like energy, charge is also conserved. You can't create or destroy electric charge. So therefore, we have this relation here that the total current coming in the number of coulombs coming into this point must be equal to the total number of coulombs going out of those of that point, which is I1 plus I2. So we have this relation here. And then we can also write down a relation for for the for Ohm's law for the separate circuits. Okay, so we have the symbols for current and for resistance. Well, what about the voltage? Now in this case, you see that if you look at each resistor on its own, it's actually connected directly to the to the cell. And this means that the voltage on each resistor is actually equal to E. Right? For this one, for this R2, it is also connected directly. Right? It doesn't have to go through the, the, the R1. The R2 is connected directly to, to E. So for both of these resistors, therefore, 
their voltages are both equal to just E. So I can write down the Ohm's law for that. E is equal to I1 times R1 for the R1 resistor and E equals to I2 times R2 for the E2, R2 resistor. And these are the equations that I have for for this circuit. Now I must somehow, somehow rearrange this and this equation to find a relation between the, the combined resistance and the separate resistances. Now if you remember what I did in the previous uh, video on for resistors in, in series, I added up the Ohm's law equations and then I made use of that relation for uh, between EMF and and the separate voltages. But this time I have a relation for the currents instead. But perhaps I could still try and add up the separate Ohm's law equations and, and see if we can make use of the current relation. So let me try that. Um, if I add this up, I'll get I'll get equations that involves E. Okay, maybe I shouldn't do that, right? Because I won't know how to get rid of the E after that. Maybe what I could do is to right. This is what we'll do. It takes some. If you are working this out from from the equations directly on your own, it would take some um, trial and error to to work out the algebra that that gives you a formula for RC. But having done it a few times, you'll know that this is what you need to do. You must first rearrange this. Uh, right. I'll 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 start by mention by by saying. Uh, what we're after. We want to eliminate the I1 and I2. Right? The first step is to get rid of the I1 and I2 from, from these three equations. Um, so let me start by rearranging this to make I1 the subject because then I can substitute uh, the expression into that. So I1, if I move R1 over to the other side, I'll get E over R1. And in this case, I'll get, if I make I2 the subject, I get E over R2. And I can do the same for the I here. I, I is in this equation. I can rearrange this. Make I the subject, that gives me E over RC. So what I have now is, uh, if you think about this equation, I have I, I1 and I2. I actually have expressions for I1, I2 and I in terms of E and, and the resistance. Now it's not very obvious why um, we should do this, but if you look at the next step, you understand why. With this equation, I shall now substitute this into here so that I get E over RC and then I substitute I1 from there E over R1 and substitute I2 from there that gives me E over R2 so let me just clarify that before, um, before it gets too abstract. Now the I there, I want to substitute that. So the I there would be would come from here. The I1 there, I can make use of this. And the I2 there, I can make use of this. Okay, so that gives me this knot here. And since E 
there is a common factor I could now oops I could now divide both sides by E and they will cancel now be very careful when you do the algebra for, for this step it's easy to think that if I cancel the E there then I'm left with RC well that's that, that would be wrong if I cancel the E here it doesn't mean that I actually just take an eraser and rub it away and that's it cancelling means dividing by E right? in algebra if you cancel something it's because we have divided by that thing now if I divide E by E I get 1 so I'm actually dividing each term by E so the E becomes 1 the, it, it doesn't mean that E is just cancelled and there's empty space left. No, it becomes replaced by one when you cancel something. So therefore, I have a one there. Okay, I still have a one there. And if I now write out the simplified equation, I have one over R C is equal to one over R one plus one over R two, and this therefore is a relation between the combined resistance and the separate resistances when these resistors are in parallel. So if you compare it with the equation for series resistors, you see that it has this one over thing on top of each of the R. So to before I finish up this this part let me just um, let me just say what happens if I have yet another resistance if I have another resistance in parallel if I call it R3 what would the equation look like if, if I have another one in parallel if I have another one in parallel, then if you look through the equation, um, that one that one is the same. It's just a, it's just a one combined resistance. Now, for this side, I would have an additional Ohm's law for that. So it's in, in so the uh, apart from R, the equations for R R one and R two, I have one more equation for R three. So this is I1 equation for I1, I2, and I should have one more for R for I3 and R3. So therefore, therefore, I should have one more term here. Here actually, I should have one more term here for R3 because I have one more of this equation for R3, and and that would also be cancelled when it's divided by E. And I should have one more equation, one more one more term for one of one over R three. So by extension, we can actually imagine what it would look like if I have maybe a fourth resistor in parallel, then just add a one over R four, and so on and so on. So this is uh, a useful equation. Let me just put this in a rectangular box. We can use this whenever we have resistors that are in, par in parallel.